All right. Well, thank you. As you all can see, and as Ms. Shirley has clearly laid out, we are not being sufficiently funded. We asked for what our students need in terms of local funding. We do not have alternative sources of funding or money hidden under a mattress somewhere to compensate for what the county is required to fund. So now I'm going to talk about something that I'm actually really excited about. Um, you all have claimed that we have no strategic plan when you know full well that we do. Ironically, at this same time, we have for many months been hard at work revising our strategic plan in light of the global pandemic. The pandemic turned our world upside down and therefore we need to establish a new baseline and revisit our goals and our targets. We are also engaged in sharpening our goals and in how we monitor and report progress towards those goals. For months, we have been working with A.J. Crayville of the Council of Great City Schools to adopt an ambitious new governance framework. It is called Student Outcomes Focused Governance. And I am so excited to share this journey with the community in the coming weeks and months. It's way too much to go into today, but I will just say that this work of the board is going to make a significant dis difference in student outcomes. It is game-changing work, and I will just tease it up that way. Student outcomes don't change until adult behaviors change. I think you've already he heard Superintendent Winston say that today. You will hear our superintendent and the nine of us on the school board say this a lot in the coming weeks and months. You might even get tired of hearing it but it is the guiding mantra for our work in student outcomes focused governance because it is true and it applies to every single adult who is in this room. So I'm going to wrap this up by sharing quotes from two incredibly wise community leaders who have been watching our dispute with great concern. The first is Dorothy Count Scoggins, whom I'm sure everyone here knows is, has been a fierce champion for public education since the days when she integrated Harding High School as a teenager, and she remains a fierce champion today. Here is what she said in a recent Axios article about accountability as we seek to better collaborate to resolve the multiple systemic issues that hold back our children. And she said, quote, who should be accountable for the past 20 years? Who's accountable for the 4,000 students who enter CMS classes while experiencing homelessness or housing instability? This is a community problem. This is a county problem. And this is a problem that spans a generation. One individual does not determine the success or failure of our children. It is the responsibility of all of us. And fittingly, the last voice that I want to leave you with is the voice of a student. And this is coming from Sydney Griffin, who's a rising junior at South Mecklenburg High School. And here is what she told the Charlotte Observer recently about your attempts to underfund us. She said, I just don't think it makes sense because if you think that CMS is already struggling on the budget that they have, what makes you think that they have the necessary resources to close the achievement gap if you take away more resources? And she went on to say, the strides that we were making to close inequity gaps, I feel like all that work will go to waste. Since we're having resources taken away from us, I don't know what's going to be our next step because we were just starting to make some progress. And that, my colleagues, is why we are here. We must collaborate. We must work together in a relationship and a dialogue that is based on real facts and based on mutual respect in order to address the underlying issues that contribute to the disparities in our schools. This is critically important. Underfunding our schools will cause harm to students and will increase 
systemic gaps. And that's, that's, that's what I've got. Over to you, I believe, Chairman Dunlap. Thank you for abiding by the time limits. Mr. Chairman, the county has the floor for 30 minutes. Thank you, sir. Let me start off first by thanking the chair of the board of the school board for uh, this presentation. So on behalf of myself and my colleagues on the board of county commissioners, it is my hope that at the end of this process, we will not only have resolved the questions about funding, but that our two bodies will establish a framework for working together in the future. I believe we have a common goal. It is not about funding, but about ensuring the children of Mecklenburg County are given the opportunity to obtain a sound basic education within CMS. The county stands ready to partner with CMS to move forward on strategies that will ensure a uniform system of education for all county residents, regardless of where they live in the county, or their racial or ethnic background, or where they attend school. This has been the hope of the board for many years, which is why a year ago, a year ago, we asked for a plan with specific strategies that would address the growing inequities in education attainment a year ago. North Carolina General Statute 115C429 reads as follows. The Board of County Commission shall have full authority to call for and the Board of Education shall have the duty to make available to the Board of County Commissioners upon request all books, records, audit reports, and other information bearing on the financial operation of the local school administrative unit, general statute. The county has not pressed for this information in the past, but we are asking for your plans to help guide our funding decisions now and into the future. As the county manager will soon share with you, we have made tremendous investments in CMS over the years, well above and beyond the basic funding typically provided by counties for public education. Over the years, we have funded requests and initiatives that we hoped would alleviate some of the pressures on CMS and help improve outcomes. Without assistance and information from CMS, we do not know what future investments will mean in terms of ensuring a sound basic education for all of our residents. To date, we have not received a plan with specific strategies for how CMS will address the issues of disparities shown in your data. We have received updates on how your current performance lags behind other targets. We have seen statistics about how, when taken as a whole, our county is not as bad off as others in our nation. That is not the standard for which we should be measured. We want what you want. But up to this point, we have not received any plan with specific actionable strategies to address the educational attainment gaps. This is a reasonable request so that the county knows how best to invest the taxpayers' dollars in education. This information can help guide our respective boards as we move forward with the difficult work that needs to be done. As you will see, Mecklenburg County is clearly meeting our obligation to fund CMS to maintain free public schools. I hope we can find a way to work together and to make sure that future, future funding is aligned so that every student in Mecklenburg County, 
regardless of whether they go to a charter school or CMS, have their funding needs met. So at this time, I will ask our county manager to speak, to give an overview of the county's budget decisions and investments in CMS and education within Mecklenburg County. Thank you, Chair Dunlap. Good afternoon, County Commissioners, School Board Members, Superintendent Winston, Mr. McCarley, Summer Associates, and members of the public. Thank you for the opportunity to make this opening presentation on behalf of Mecklenburg County. My presentation this afternoon will demonstrate that the Board of County Commissioners provides funding that exceeds the amount legally necessary to maintain a system of free public schools and in fact provides resources outside of CMS designed to enhance and support education in Mecklenburg County. I've served as Mecklenburg County Manager for the past eight years and in that role I have presented eight recommended budgets to the Board of County Commissioners. The information presented today will be in the context of how budget recommendations have been developed over that time. The topics I will cover in my presentation include budget considerations, county funding to CMS, CMS enrollment, local per pupil spending, charter fund increases, annual budget enhancements, beyond basic education, teacher supplements, fund balance, county efforts to support CMS, and conditional allocations. Let me begin by saying that no county department, agency, or business partner receives their full budget request. Doing so would elevate the property tax rate to levels that would be intolerable for residents of Mecklenburg County. Developing responsible budgets that meets the needs of our county departments, nonprofit partners, Central Piedmont, Medic, Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, and most importantly, our community, takes careful thought and deliberation. There are several considerations that are taken into account when developing a budget the size of Mecklenburg County. The first is revenue. How much money is available to spend? This includes looking at growth and assessed valuation, which 